on a small 121 acre plot of land in what was once a small chocolate factory town sits the sweetest place on earth hershey park originally founded by milton s hershey in the early 1900s as a small peaceful leisure park for his employees and residents of the small town in which the park resided hershey has grown to become a world-class park boasting 76 attractions including 14 roller coasters and 15 water rides Additionally, Hershey Park features many other attractions beyond rides, including an aqua theater, an amphitheater, country grill, music box theater, Zoo America, and Midway Tent. The park uses a unique measurement system to quickly and easily allow both riders and park attendants to know which riders are tall enough to ride which rides. Near the entrance of the park, there are several signs that have a section on them highlighted that reads the name of one of several kinds of Hershey candy products. Miniature chocolates? for riders 36 inches and under, Kisses for riders between 36 and 42 inches, Reese's for riders 42 and 48 inches, Hershey's chocolate bars for riders between 48 and 54 inches, Twizzlers for riders 54 to 60 inches, and Jolly Ranchers for riders 60 inches and taller. Riders are measured up and confirmed by a park employee and then are given a wristband identifying what candy class they are. This helps make the lines go much faster and overall provides a much smoother park experience. Hershey Park has a reputation of being a sweet, family-friendly park with many rides for children, including 20 kiddie rides and 32 family rides, as well as many play areas for children in the water park. The park is also a sought-out spot for thrill-seekers, for the park has many thrilling coasters and rides. Milton Hershey created the park to give people a place to go and forget about their worries and stresses, and just relax and have fun, and the park continues to bring that vision to life to this very day. To learn how Hershey Park has managed to gain and maintain its tasty reputation throughout the long history of the park, we have to go back to the early life of a young candy maker. No kitty rides for these veterans. In 1893, a 26-year-old Milton Hershey attends the World's Columbian Exposition, exposed to German chocolate-making machinery for the first time. At the time, he owned and operated the successful Lancaster Caramel Company. However, after the exposition, he was smitten with chocolate-making. Because of milk chocolate being a luxury item, made only in Switzerland and imported to the United States, and only available to the wealthy, Hershey had never seen chocolate-making machinery, nor had the knowledge of its production. Hershey wanted to make milk chocolate available to everyone, no matter their wealth, so he bought the chocolate making machinery he had seen and began producing various chocolate sweets. In 1900, he sold the Lancaster Caramel Company for a million dollars so that he could focus only on chocolate making. In 1903, he returned to the township of Dairy Church, a small community in Pennsylvania where he had grown up. He was to build a factory here, as he knew the town could provide the amount of fresh milk he would need to make the perfect chocolate. Through trial and error, he perfected his milk chocolate recipe. It wasn't quite as fine and rich as the Swiss milk chocolate, but he had made it affordable for the common person. He would go on to purchase a 400 acre plot of land and begin construction on the chocolate factory. The plot of land allowed Hershey to gain water rights to Brikes Dam as well as Spring Creek. He not only wanted to build a factory, but envisioned a perfect town to accompany it. Unlike in other factory towns, which were built with bland row homes, he built a town full of actual homes, as he put it, one and two story brick family homes placed on tree lined streets. Hershey offered a $100 contest to name the town, and on September 1st, 1904, the winner was announced. Hershey Coco, spelled Hershey K O K O, all one word, submitted by Mrs. T K Doyle. However, over the course of the next year, the second part of the name was dropped, and on June 1st, 1905, the town was officially named Hershey. In the same year, Hershey and other business partners would create the Hershey Trust Company and Hershey Improvement Company. These were to help maintain the town and the coming park, which Hershey was planning so that the town's residents would have plenty of leisure activities and would never get bored. He valued his workers and citizens, as well as the quality of his products, over his profits and engaged in lots of philanthropic work throughout his life. I'll do a full video on the life and legacy of Hershey at some point, as he really is an inspiring person. Soon after the official naming of the town, the factory was finished construction and the company was officially and completely relocated to the town. At the same time, development on the rest of the town and the park had began. The first pavilion of the park, then known as West End Park or Hershey Park in two words, was constructed by James Putt in the fall and Hershey put his gardener, Harry Haverstick, in charge of preparing the walkways and plant life of the park so that they would be vibrant and lovely for the residents by the time of the opening of the 1906 season. 
The park's original layout was simple but elegant, featuring Spring Creek, gorgeous landscaped gardens, lots of walking paths, an entertainment building for skating, music, and where a community band played, an athletic field, children's playgrounds, and picnic pavilions. Hershey Park formally and officially opened to the public on May 30th, 1906, which was Memorial Day at the time. It opened with a dedicated purpose, quote, the park will be dedicated to the use of anyone who may desire to avail themselves of the pleasures it offers, end quote. A baseball game between Hershey Baseball Club and the Felton Athletic Club of Steelton was played, with Hershey losing 4-0. Music was performed by the newly formed Hershey Band. The appeal of the park in the early days was its large shaded areas and fun recreational activities. In the main pavilion, there would be theater productions, and Spring Creek became a beautiful boating location. Thousands of people could comfortably fit into this early Hershey Park, and thousands did, causing the park to need to expand. And so, in 1908, a trolley system was added. Following Hershey's death, the Hershey Trust Company took ownership of the park, and the Hershey Improvement Company would be merged with the park and other non-candy properties and operations to form Hershey Estates. The park would also get many new rides in the following decade and a half, even exceeding the rapid expansion of the park in the 1920s. In 1947, Cuddle Up, a ride similar to the teacups but the main platform doesn't spin, opened, and two years later, Kitty Land officially opened, relocating all of the former Kitty rides to the land, and adding two new rides, Kitty Horse and Bucky, and Lucas Motor Boat Ride. The next year, the twin Ferris wheels opened, measuring 66 feet high. The miniature train was added to Kitty Land in 1952, and in 1955, Kitty Turnpike was added as well. Five years later, a regular turnpike ride was added to the park, and the following year, the Dry Gulch Railroad was opened, featuring a live 4-4-0 locomotive named Merida, which was built by Crown Metal Productions for the park. Aerial Joyride was replaced with Starship America in 1962, and outboard motorboats was also added to Kitty Land. The mill chute was rethemed by Bill Tracy into a jungle design, and it was reopened in 1963 as a new ride called Lost River, even though the ride itself was exactly the same. 1964 brought the Flying Coaster, and the pretzel was renamed the Golden Nugget. A kitty whip ride named Wells Cargo was added. In 1965, the kitty rides, Dizzy Drums, Traffic Jam, Helicopters, and Space Age were all added to Kitty Land. In 1966, Tip Top, a slide down spinning ride, was opened, and the year after, Paratrooper was added. Roundup, a stand up circular ride, was added in 68, and in 69, the Monorail and Magic Carpet Ride Giant Slide, a knapsack slide ride, were installed. The next year, the rotor was added, a stand-up, spinning, dark ride where riders stick to the wall because of the spinning. Additionally, Little Red Caboose was installed and it cost 10 cents to ride. But following the 1970 season, the fee was removed. Despite all the new attractions, the park was declining hard. At the time, the park had no gate, and as a result, the rides and attractions are very easy to vandalize and the trash was becoming an issue. Management was left with a choice, either close or rebrand. In 1972, Hershey Park announced a five-year redevelopment plan for the park, turning it from a regional fun park of Hershey Park with two words into a world-class amusement park called Hershey Park with one word. The redevelopment plan, however, was already underway. The previous year, the park had been gated to protect it and to add an extra level of professionalism. Additionally, the park introduced two admission models. A general admission with unlimited rides, costing $3.5 for adults ages 12 and up, $1.75 for 5 to 12, and 4 and under is free. And a pay-as-you-ride model, which cost $1 for adults, 50 cents for juniors, and 4 and under is free. However, the park scrapped the pay-as-you-ride model, as the general admission model was much more popular. While the main gate was under construction, there were five entrances to the park instead of the usual one. These entrances were the main entrance of Hershey Park Arena, near the current entrance of the park before Chocolate World, Athletic Field near Modern Day Founders Way, Miniature Railroad, and across from the old Hershey Park Zoo. In 1972, three new named areas were introduced, Carousel Circle, Der Deutsche Platz, also known as Pennsylvania Dutch Place, and the Animal Gardens, which was a petting zoo that replaced the old Hershey Park Zoo. Neither Dutch Place nor Animal Gardens featured any new rides, but Carousel Circle 
featured several. Carousel was relocated here, as well as three kiddie rides, Space Age, helicopters, and motorcycles. Monster and Scrambler were purchased, and a pair of roller coasters called the Twin Tower Toboggan were added to the park as the second roller coaster. Two people sat in a car and were lifted up a shaft, kind of like an elevator, and then at the end of the shaft, they would enter a track that would spiral down, and then near the end would have a larger drop and spiral. The parking lot was doubled in size, and a sunset savings plan was introduced, knocking off a dollar of admission if you entered the park after 6 p.m. Unfortunately in this year, Hurricane Agnes brought severe flooding to Hurricane Park, and several rides were damaged, including the Lost River and the Magic Carpet Slide. Neither ever reopened, but they were kept with the hopes to reopen or relocate them in the future. Unfortunately, that would never happen. 1973 would see new themed areas Tudor Square in Rhineland, and Coal Cracker was opened to replace Mill Chute. Coal Cracker was built by Arrow and was the first Hydro Flume ride. The Sky Ride was opened and was designed to be a transportation ride from Rhineland to a station behind the Penny Arcade and next to Coal Cracker. The following year, the park would see its third coaster open in Trailblazer, manufactured by Aero with a maximum speed of 35 miles per hour. To make room for the coaster, Turnpike was truncated and then removed altogether the next season and was replaced by Twin Turnpike. Kitty Coaster Mini Comet was added and the Kissing Tower was opened. Originally, the Kissing Tower was going to open in 1974, but was delayed until 1975 because of the flooding. It was also placed on the highest point in the park so as to avoid potential damage from another flood. The Kissing Tower stands 330 feet tall, towering over the rest of the park. The twin Ferris wheels were replaced by Himalaya, a Music Express type ride. The Himalaya was moved and replaced with the old Whipperoo. In place of Himalaya, the first steel looping roller coaster on the East Coast was constructed and opened on July 4th, 1977. It was manufactured by Anton Schwarzkopf with a max speed of 45 miles per hour and was called Super Duper Looper. The opening marked the end of the redevelopment project and it would be another decade before another ride was added. In 1978, the Golden Nugget building was torn down and replaced with the Fender Bender. Mini Comet was also removed. In 82, the bug was removed and replaced with the Wave Swinger. Dry Gold Railroad was expanded 1,000 feet of track and got a new steam engine named Scooter in 1984. The park didn't add any new rides in the next couple of years, choosing instead to invest in hotel properties that did not immediately work out. However, after the 86 season, the park was set to kick off a new era of thrill rides. Find us in different places Turns a beautiful morning into a wonderful day Things to see, things to do Places to be, there's lots for you The park would rapidly expand with many new thrill rides Starting with Canyon River Rapids opening in 1987, a set of water slides called Western Shootout opening the year after, and then in 1990 with its creation of Mine Town. The Penny Arcade was replaced with a three story building which housed the Mine Town Arcade, Mine Town Restaurant, and other various games. The Flying Falcon replaced the Himalaya, and three kitty rides replaced Cold Shaker. Dry Gulf Railroad received a second steam engine, which looked similar to the scooter, but was larger and more powerful, and was named Janelle. 91 saw a Vekoma Boomerang coaster added to the park called Sidewinder, and the Tidal Force opened as the tallest water plunge in the world. Hershey Park also expanded to 90 acres in total. In 96, the wooden roller coaster Wildcat was built, one word, named after the original Wildcat with two words. It was manufactured by Great Coasters International and has a maximum speed of 50 miles per hour. A Ferris wheel and whip ride were added to the park in 97, and the park expanded to be 110 acres total. The next year, the inverted coaster Great Bear was built, manufactured by B&M and reaching maximum speeds of 58 miles per hour. This is also the most expensive coaster to date for the park. The next year, the Wild Mountain House, Mary Dairy Dip Fun Slide, Music Express, Chaos, and the Frog Hopper were all added. With the turn of the century, the park got the first dueling coaster in the United States, a wooden coaster named Lightning Racer, manufactured by Great Coasters and reaching top speeds of 51 miles per hour. As this was the second Great Coasters International roller coaster at the park, Hershey Park would become the first amusement park to ever have two Great Coasters International coasters at the same park. On Lightning Racer, riders can choose one of two trains named Thunder or Lightning. Both tracks go through the same features, although at different times. The speed of the trains is determined by many variables such as lift speed, weather, maintenance, weight, how the riders are arranged in the car, and so the winner is never predictable. 2002 saw Roller Soaker open, manufactured by Setpoint. This was an inverted roller coaster which could seat four guests per car, with pairs of two facing opposite directions. The coaster was unique in that each guest got several gallons of water that they could dump out with a press of a button, soaking any guests that are underneath the track. 
That said, the guests could fight back, as there were several spray guns and other ways to soak the guests on the ride as well. Personally, this is one of my favorite rides at Hershey, and I was so sad when they removed it. It wasn't thrilling, but it was one of the more unique and fun experiences I've had on a coaster. 2003 saw the addition of The Claw, a 65-foot pendulum ride, which was the first of its kind in the Northeast when it debuted. Storm Runner opened as the park's 10th coaster, and was manufactured by Intamin, and was a launch coaster that could go from 0 to 72 miles per hour in 2 seconds. It was the first hydraulic launch coaster to feature inversions. Riders sit on the track, staring down the runway they are about to be launched down. The sound of a heartbeat plays in your ears over a nearby speaker. The train rolls back slightly as the brakes lift, and the voice goes, Now get ready. Here we go! And with the word go, the train shoots off. In 2005, the Great Wheel was removed and replaced with Balloon Fight and Starship America. Carousel Circle was renamed Founder Circle to honor Milton Hershey. The park introduced Reese's Extreme Cup Challenge in 2006 the first interactive dark ride to have two cars compete against each other. The following year, the park would celebrate its 100th birthday. Every weekend, there was a fireworks event, and Hershey Park unveiled a new area, the Boardwalk at Hershey Park, an all-new water park and themed area. The Boardwalk opened with several new attractions, East Coast Waterworks, a set of six water slides, a water play area, Coastline Plunge, four water slides, a flow rider called Wave Rider, a kiddie wave pool called Bayside Pier, and a kiddie water play area called Sandcastle Cove. Roller Soaker, Tidal Wave, and Canyon River Rapids were all included in the boardwalk as well. However, Canyon River Rapids would be removed after this season. The Western Shootout water slides were removed and replaced with something much hotter. The steepest drop in the world at the time, Fahrenheit, manufactured by Intamin and reaching top speeds of 58 miles per hour with a drop of 97 degrees. Currently, it stands as the 7th steepest coaster in the world. In 2008, Hershey Park officially became certified as storm ready by the National Weather Service for its emergency procedures and evacuation plan. In 2009, the boardwalk opened a new section nicknamed the Sequel, which featured a wave pool called the Shore and a lazy river called the Intercoastal Highway. The Sequel also featured cabanas for an additional price. Sky Rush, the park's 12th coaster and first hyper coaster, was announced on August 11, 2011 and debuted in May 2012. Sky Rush is manufactured by Intamin, features wing seating, and reaches top speeds of 75 miles per hour. The ride would be located in a forgotten area of the park called Sunken Gardens. Around when Sky Rush was announced, it was reported that planners were looking to realign Park Boulevard, a road which runs along the southwestern border of the park. This would allow the park to absorb the land from the old Parkview Golf Course, which is also owned by Hershey Estates, and closed down in 2005. This plan would allow the park to expand by 25%. However, Hershey has not publicly disclosed any information on an expansion in this area. The product is underway as of 2017. The Laugh Track opened in 2015 and was the first indoor spinning glow coaster in the United States. On August 2nd, 2016, the Hershey Triple Tower was announced and it opened on April 8, 2017. This was a set of three different sized drop towers so that riders could choose how thrilling they want the ride to be. Instead of going straight up and down, however, the ride drops a little and bounces up repeatedly before doing one large drop. A Chick-fil-A was also opened on the same day as the Triple Tower. On August 8, 2017, Hershey announced two new water rides for the following season, Whitecap Racer and Breaker's Edge. Whitecap Racer is the world's longest matte racer slide, having six chutes and two helix tunnels. Breaker's Edge is a hydromagnetic water coaster featuring flying saucer turns and using the roller soaker station. Despite being a water attraction, Breaker's Edge is considered the 14th coaster at Hershey. Breaker's Edge wait times could reach two hours at times after both opened in late May 2018. On August 2nd, 2018, a new dark ride called Cup Fusion to replace the Reese's Extreme Cup Challenge was announced. Agents, welcome to Reese's Central inside Hershey Park. Riders will have to help defend the Reese's factory from evil candies that want to prevent the world from having Reese's candy. The company also teased that their biggest announcement yet was coming on August 2nd, 2018. The announcement came in the form of Chocolate Town, a large expansion to the front of the park. Currently, the entrance of the park is very crowded and narrow. As you follow a path through several shops and restaurants, it's very nice looking, but slowly gets narrower and narrower as you get to security and the gate. Additionally, the entrance of the park is quite far away from the both Chocolate World Visitor Center as well as the parking lot. Chocolate Town will move the entrance closer to Chocolate World, will feature the largest full-service restaurant in Hershey, and several other shops and places to eat. Additionally, in Chocolate Town is the Kissing Fountain, a water fountain with sprays of water made to look like a Hershey kiss. Much of Chocolate Town will be open year-round. Chocolate Town will feature the park's 15th coaster, dubbed the, quote, fastest, longest, tallest, and sweetest coaster yet. However, almost no other information is known about the new coaster. There's lots of speculation that it will be a hyper coaster, similar to Sky Rush, but less intense, as general audiences were a little displeased with how intense of a ride Sky Rush is. 
Personally, I hope that it is a Giga Coaster in a similar vein to Millennium Force or Nitro. All of the renders Hershey has put out for Chocolate World have shown that the coaster is going to have a brown track, which should imply that it's chocolate themed, which would be a really nice Giga chocolate themed coaster as a centerpiece for the park. To me, that just sounds really good. Even if it is a hyper coaster, just having a chocolate themed coaster, finally, is going to be a really, really nice centerpiece for the park really nice when you go in. I'm super excited for Chocolate World. The entrance has always been really, really crowded and just kind of awkward, and it'll be really nice to have a nice open, full layout. I think it's gonna make Hershey Park look a lot nicer and feel a lot nicer. Chocolate Town is set to be opened in 2020, so I guess we will just have to wait until we get more information from Hershey to know for sure. Hershey Park has gained a reputation as one of the nicest family-friendly parks in the country, with beautiful landscaping and nature, many attractions and rides, and fun theming. The park continues to live on with Milton Hershey's dream, and with over 100 years of entertainment and amusement, Hershey Park doesn't look to be stopping anytime soon. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, and click the little bell to make sure to be notified of my newest uploads, since we all know how reliable YouTube can be. Also, let me know if there's any topics you'd like to see videos on. What's your favorite ride, Hershey? Mine is a tie between Storm Runner and Sky Rush. Anyway, I hope you all have a great day.